coincidence. This is the most diverse mayor's administration that has ever been in the history of downtown. And you see it right here. Black, white, Latino, straight, LGBTQIA. It's the most diverse mayor's office that's ever been. And that represents the city of Pittsburgh. So I'd like for you to give my team a round of well applause. And last but certainly not least, the folks who are helping us stream this meeting into the homes of many folks who weren't able to join us in person tonight, our amazing City Channel team. Thank you for being here to live stream the event. And thank you to our interpreters for being here and making sure that this meeting is accessible for, for people of all abilities. Um, can you go to the, the meeting norms slide and stuff? Thank you. So we are so excited to be here with you all tonight because we know how much passion and energy is in this room um, and how much you all love Homewood. And we're, we're thankful that you brought that passion, that energy, that wisdom that the mayor spoke about to the meeting. That being said, um, we may not all agree on everything that we're gonna talk about tonight. And we are gonna have an opportunity at the end of the presentation for anyone who wants to speak to come up and speak. We ask that you, you share your thoughts with respect for everyone who's here. And we ask that you um, just consider the time of everyone here, limit your, your input to, to a minute or your question to a minute so that there's enough time for everyone who wants to ask a question or to speak, to come up and speak. And so with that, I'm gonna hand things over to our Deputy Chief of Staff, Felicity Williams. Thank you, Rebecca. Good evening, Homewood. How are you guys doing tonight? Oh, I think we can do better than that. Better than that. Good evening, Homewood. How are you guys doing tonight? Yeah. Much better, much better. So before we go ahead and jump into some of the updates that we have for you all tonight, we wanted to take a minute to talk a little bit about All In Homewood and, and how, we, how we got here. So as the mayor said at the beginning of the meeting, the last time we were all together in this room was in March. Uh, first, earlier in the day, we did a community walk with the mayor and executive staff, our neighborhood services team, to get a, a chance to see firsthand um, challenges that exist in the neighborhood, but also the assets and wonderful things about Homewood. Following that, we had a community meeting in this space where, once again, we talked about all the things that we love about Homewood, but we recognize that there are some challenges. More specifically, there's been some challenges related to gun violence, and that's something that has uh, existed for, for quite some time. And so we wanted to hear, as the mayor said, you heard Rebecca talk about this too as well, the wisdom and input from you all about how we address those challenges. And so we heard that from you all, we took that feedback uh, from you and used that as informing our work as administration. We followed that community meeting by coming out here in April to do a cleanup and department assessments. So we brought our department directors with us. You all may remember we were out here on a Saturday uh, morning and afternoon to do some assessments around Homewood from the feedback that we heard from you all, concerns that you had about blight and vacancy, about trash, um, about sidewalks and your infrastructure and, and traffic and all of these different things that we heard from you all at that first meeting. And following that, in June, we launched our plan for peace. The idea around this is to take a public health approach to addressing gun violence. So taking all of the things that you, we heard from you all about your community uh, and combining that also with a public safety strategy to work to reduce, to get to zero gun violence deaths. Now you heard the mayor say that we're not there yet. There are no microwave meals. You heard him say that as well. But we are here to say that we have made progress. We want to talk to you all about how we continue to make progress. And so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Lisa Frank from our team, our Chief Operations Administrative Officer, to start walking through some of those updates with you. And then we are going to go through some of that data to talk more specifically about what the mayor already said about the positive impacts and results that we are seeing from this work that we've been doing. Thank you. Good evening. Um, as Felicity said, I'm going to just take you through a little bit of um, things that have happened 
And then a little bit about things to come. I need to ask y'all a question about sidewalks. And, um, uh, and then uh, we'll, I'll hand it off, and, but we'll leave time for people that have other kinds of questions. So as Felicity said, you know, what we heard people say when we were here in March and when we were here in April and when you call and leave messages on the mayor's phone is that, you know, we have uh, seniors who are worried about going out in the dark. We have parents who are worried about traffic and the safety of their kids going to school. We heard concerns about illegal dumping and trash. And again, as Felicity said, we went to our directors, the people who are in charge of roads and in charge of cleaning up and in charge of hiring people at the back of the room and, and in charge of those things and said, okay, take a look at this stuff and let's try to have a little bit of a plan. So um, uh, one of the first things we did was to think about lighting. Um, you know, the first time I met the mayor, he started to talk to me about the way that neighborhoods look and feel and how that's so important to people's future. It's not just because if you don't have a light, you could trip and fall, which you could, that's a safety concern, but also the way a neighborhood looks and the way a neighborhood feels and the way a neighborhood is cared for lets people know that there's that there's hope, that they matter, and that things as simple as, as trash are not really simple things, and things that are as simple as lights are not really simple things, they're important things. And so we started with lighting. Um, uh, and here are some things that have happened. Uh, on Frankstown Road, we replaced five intersections with higher wattage LEDs. So what does that mean? There's a light bulbs that you're used to before, they're kind of sodium, they burn a little bit yellow, but they're not really very bright. Um, went and replaced those at a bunch of intersections. Frankstown and North Homewood, Frankstown and Collier, Frankstown and North Braddock, Frankstown and Brushton, Frankstown and Oakwood, and then, did you see them? You, yeah, you notice that it's brighter? This is excellent. Um, and uh, on Hamilton Ave, replaced the, those old high pressure sodium lights with LEDs in all the blocks between North Lang and Oakwood and did the same uh, with the same blocks on Bennett Street. I also want to share that we have a big lighting project coming up, which is to do more poles and more LED lighting, not just in Homewood, but across the city. But what we said to that contractor is, when you get started, you have to start in the places that are the most dark. You have to start in the places where people have not had their lighting looked after. So um, uh, they're doing those studies and their analyses, but if you live in a place that needs more light, then you should anticipate that, uh, that our contractor is going to get there first. Um, uh, okay, maybe that's enough about lighting. Traffic safety. So traffic calming, you know, what does that mean? It means the cars are going too fast, and when cars go fast, bad things happen. Cars hit each other, they hit people, they hit children, and traffic calming is really something that our department, our DOMI department does, um, uh, mobility and infrastructure, to try to figure out how to make everybody slow down. So the North Homewood Ave traffic calming project is underway, and I think, who told me this? Rebecca, did you tell me this? The speed bump's going in next week. Is that right? On Kelly Street. On, on, on Kelly Street, I'm sorry. And the one that is on North Homewood Ave, I think, is already in. It's in. Did you see it? Did it slow you down? <laughs> All right. All right. That is what it's supposed to do. Um, in addition to those, you know, what they call vertical barriers, you know, you, you're, you go slow because you don't want to jolt in your car. The way that the signals work, you know, street lights can also help to slow people down and not all of the street lights here are synced the way they should be synced or work the way that they should work. Um, so with PennDOT, we have a design to put new signals at Myrtland and Lang, Homewood, Starrett, Collier, Braddock, Brushton, and Black Door Roads. And the Hamilton and Homewood signal is Sorry. next week. You'll see that one next week. Okay. Uh, oh, let's do trash and brush and hazard. So I, I think people have seen, I hope people have seen, we've got some new trash cans. Um, uh, I, I learned this from our litter people. What, what makes people litter is seeing litter. Um, when people don't see litter, they don't throw litter. If people see, everybody's nodding, you know this. If you see a candy wrapper, you're going to throw a candy wrapper. So making sure that the first piece of litter doesn't get on the ground is the way to make sure that the second piece of litter doesn't get on the ground. And DPW has put in some new trash cans, I think, near bus stops. I'm hoping that you've seen, you've seen those. That's excellent. Um, and we have been, you know, systematically trying to keep the weeds down because that's where um, you know, rodents and things like that can be to keep um, needles picked up. I know people are concerned about that, and we did um, do something about the legal dumping. So um, I hope uh, I hope people have seen those improvements. And then finally, sidewalks. 
So we have been out here looking at sidewalks. Sidewalks matter because, for a lot of reasons, you don't want your kids stepping, no, we don't want anybody, kids or adults, stepping into the street where there's a car because you can't navigate the sidewalk. And we don't want people tripping on sidewalks that are all uneven and all of that. So we have been out to pave a bunch of um, sidewalks and uh, there were some photos somewhere of those, but I don't know where they went. But here's the thing about sidewalks, and this is really the question that we want to ask about sidewalks. So in the city of Pittsburgh, the rules around sidewalks make uh, having really good sidewalks kind of tricky. And here's why. Because the city is allowed to fix the sidewalk that's on like a city property. So here's a lot, the city owns it, that sidewalk is ours. But here's a lot, and a, and a person owns it, that sidewalk is supposed to be theirs, and they're supposed to take care of that sidewalk. You all know this, right? Okay. It's not a great system if what you want to have is good sidewalks for a bunch of reasons. If you're the person and you have a house, you're not the city, right? And your sidewalk is a little, you know, whatever. Do you know where there's a contractor? Maybe it's expensive and it's really hard to afford. Maybe, you know, like to go and, and fix that sidewalk. And if you're the city, if we're only paving like here's our spot, and now we're going to skip five spots and put in another spot, and now we're going to skip two spots. Like you don't get a sidewalk that way. You get slabs of concrete that way, right? What we want to do is be able to look at a street and say, hey, people can't all walk on this street easily, and then just roll on down and fix that sidewalk. Okay, to do that, we're going to have to get into a, a this is what I want to ask you if people are interested. Thank you for watching this video of Pittsburgh Events. To watch this video again or any other video from Pittsburgh Events, you can go to the YouTube channel. is 18 Rico. It's youtube.com forward slash 18RICCO. Again, thank you for watching. And you can check out this video and any other video from Pittsburgh Events and many other videos that didn't make it on TV. We're going to have to get into a little bit of a different relationship with one another. So we're going to need people who have houses and are responsible for that sidewalk to first of all say, yeah, it's okay if the, if the city takes care of that, I don't have to find a contractor, I don't have to worry about that, and then what we would say to you is, okay, and then you should probably kick in a little bit, you're not gonna have to do the whole thing, and we can think about what's the right rate there, but what we would do is just like look at a whole street and say, hey, can we figure out how to do this together so that we can just go and make a sidewalk on that street? Do people wanna dig in around that? All right. All right, well, we're gonna dig in around that then. Okay, uh, let me just do a couple more things. I think we want to just talk a little bit about public, no, one improvement. So while we're talking about built environment, I'm sure everybody's heard about the Homewood Fields that's coming. Um, it's a football field and a baseball field and fixing the pool and a little bit of a community center. Yes, <laughs> okay, <laughs> awesome, yep. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, there's a little bit of construction going on now. A lot of construction will be happening next year. And you know, the idea is to let the, the community that has worked so hard on this project put those kids on the field in the fall of the following year. So that's our target. Uh, people had a couple of questions about the field that I'm just going to answer quickly. Um, people wanted to know whether the field was going to cause more flooding in basements. Um, uh, there's high water table there and high water table in some of the houses around but the short answer to that question is no um, the the grass is permeable grass it's not going to run off anywhere if your basement's flooding uh, now it's not going to change because of the field let's put it that way um, and then people wanted to know about like the cleanliness so uh, we thought about that because it's true, people come and they play and they leave their trash and maybe they do other things you don't want to do. So we're going to um, experiment with a new way of permitting with people. If you want to get a permit to play on the field, to get that permit, you have to agree that you're going to leave that field and those locker rooms that have bathrooms in the same state that you found them. And if you don't, you can't come back and we're going to send you a bill for the cleaning. So that way, people who pick up, it's going to be fine, people who don't pick up, well, that'll be a, a slightly different story. And then the last question I know that people have is parking. The project is going to result in a little more parking. We got a little work to do to figure out how to get everybody to share space. And those questions are not perfectly answered, but I want people to know that we're aware that we got to do some work there to figure that out. All right, now I'm ready. Um, zero gun deaths. Felicity said it. The mayor has said it. Everybody has said it. That's our goal. Zero gun deaths. Zero gun deaths in Homewood. Zero gun deaths anywhere in our city. So what we've done um, since
since we last saw you were a couple of things to try to help us get there. One was to double the, the GBI staff. And people know what the, the GBI staff is. The um, uh, uh, group violence, thank you, intervention, which is, you know, violence can be like a little bit like a disease, like somebody gets harmed or, and, then, and then people want to come to, you know, take care of that, and then people want to come to take care of that, and then people want to come to take care of that, and then before you know it, you've got a lot of people involved in violence. And so what the GBI team does is, is try to interrupt that, to try to say to people like, whoa, whoa, hold on, you know, let's stop, let's think, let's think about another path so that instead of getting worse, things begin to get better. Um, proactive policing, you know, we heard people say, what happened to community policing? What happened to those beat cops that we used to have? Um, can, People get out of the cars. Could we have police who are talking to us before we call 911? And so we have steadily increased the um, the number of hours that police are spending doing proactive policing rather than reactive policing. And that's something that I uh, want to be sure that people know. And you can talk to Paula in the in the back about it. Is that we are going to have a new class, meaning. Um, we're going to recruit and train a new class of police officers, and we we so want those officers to uh, be from our community, reflect our community, have the values of the community, um, and and be the uh, first class of uh, police officers trained under uh, Mayor Ganey to to really be the future of our police department. So, if you're somebody who loves the community and feels like that's a, a thing that you'd like to be part of, a, a really historic first police class, um, you can talk to Paul, you can talk to any of us, but you know, think about that and that will start um, maybe in about March, February, March of next year, but you want to start talking about it now. Talk about Oh, and yes, and Chief is reminding me that, um, you know, you may have heard that to be able to start uh, as a police officer in the city of Pittsburgh, you needed to have 60 college credits. We're not going to do that anymore. We're going to help. All right. So, uh, so people can, can, can get their education as you go. Some of your work in the police academy will count towards that, you know, and if you decide you want to do more education, you're working for the city of Pittsburgh, you can go to college, you can do those things, but you're not going to have to have that before you walk in the door. Hey, hey, hey. One more thing. So what did all that, G more GBI and more beat police officers? You know, I think we're starting to see results. This is a, um, if you can see it, this tries to measure where we were in 2021 versus t where we were in 2022. So the first six months of 2021 and the first six months of 2022. So in some areas, you know, like property, eh, things, things got a little worse. But the thing that I think we're all super concerned about, which is violence. We've seen a 10% reduction in violence over the course of you know, this year relative to last year. So we're um, in Homewood. I'm sorry, this is only in Homewood. Um, so we're, we're hopeful about that. We're going to keep our kind of feet on the gas with, you know, new strategies to help keep people safe, to help people have hope, to intervene. And then I think, Felicity, you wanted to say something about this slide, yes? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Before I talk a little bit about the slide, I do want to take a moment to recognize your incoming uh, State House Representative Latasha Mays, who's with us this evening. I want to recognize uh, the Mayor of Wilkinsburg, Dante Comins, who's in the back there as well. And I want to make sure that I recognize our REACH team. You heard Lisa talk about GVI. These are the guys that, that are working with us doing that work. So I want to recognize them in the back there as well. So Lisa just talked to you guys about a slide of one way we can look at how we measure the impact uh, of the work in, in Homewood. This is another way that we want to look at this, very specifically talking about gun violence deaths. That is the commitment we made here to get to zero gun violence deaths. Our data told us that Homewood, um, in the beginning of this year, had the highest amount of gun violence deaths of any neighborhood in the city of Pittsburgh. That's why we came to Homewood. Uh, for the meeting in March, and we're focusing on Homewood. If you look at this chart to the left, I told you guys that we were here for a community meeting in March. We came back <clears throat> and did the all-in uh, cleanup and department assessments in April. 
and we released our plan for peace in June. And as you guys can see, gun violence deaths have trailed off during that time. You'll see that since April, we've only had two gun violence deaths. Now, as the mayor said, there are no microwave meals, we're not at zero yet, but we do have to take time to celebrate the positive success of the impact and the progress that we are seeing here in Homewood, and we want to make sure that we highlighted that for you all tonight. And up next, I'm going to bring Chief, you want to go? Over Chief of Staff, we need to talk to you guys about vacant buildings. We have some questions that we need to put forth to you. Lisa said she wanted to talk to you guys about sidewalks. We need to talk to you guys about vacant buildings and how the community feels about how they want us to handle those. Chief of Staff is going to come up, and then we're going to open up into broader discussion. We have to figure out a way to get you to talk tonight, so I guess I'm talking about vacant uh, buildings. All right, so one of the things we uh, have all known many neighborhoods, especially underserved neighborhoods in the city, we have a lot of vacant properties. The question that we need to figure out together is how do we resolve some of these questions around what to do with our vacant property. We want to form a partnership with you because, as we said, this is a co-governance model. So for Homewood, there are a couple ways to deal with our vacant properties. Some think Let's just knock everything down and start new. And then there are some who say, we can use these structures and, and reuse them and build them, I mean, uh, uh, do some work in rehab. Thank you, Karen. Rehab. Now, these particular ones were identified when we came out uh, on our walk as problem because we have a lot of unhoused people, not that the unhoused people are the problem, but they were using these structures, and they're not, they're not safe. They're not safe for the folk who are using them, and they're not safe for the community in the current condition. And what we tried to do in the original is try to, because everybody said, why don't you just board them up? Well, we tried that. And what happens when you board something up? They come back in. So that's just like a reoccurring. That's not going to resolve the issue. So we need help from you because in order to do this, we don't own, some of these we don't own, right? We don't own these. So, we can't go through a, a procedure to try to take these over because they are unsafe. Uh, but if we take them over, we go through that process, we want to know from you, do you want them torn down, rehab, and it has to be a conversation because we don't know what the cost will be to rehab. We don't know what the cost will be to tear down. So I guess what we're, as we're talking about the sidewalks, this is another open question that we need to figure out together. Because, you know, we don't want, and, and where's Rashad at? So Homewood Collaborative is your communal process around development. And I know, like in every other community we go into, there are some people who disagree with processes. That's not up for the mayor to determine. Right now, the Homewood Collaborative is the process by which we come to the table to discuss what happens in your neighborhood from a development. Thank you for watching this video of Pittsburgh Events. To watch this video again or any other video from Pittsburgh Events, you can go to the YouTube channel. It's 18 Rico. It's youtube.com forward slash 18RICCO. Again, thank you for watching and you can check out this video and any other video from Pittsburgh events and many other videos that didn't make it on TV. Why would that be, uh, that is at the end, at the end, we'll have a question. That's a, that's a community conversation. That, that's a community conversation that you all will have to work through. But our, we, we can't do 15 meetings in one community. So we have to have a collective table that has everyone there. Now, if somebody's not allowed at a table, we need to know that. But if there's an open community table where everyone can come to and talk about development, we want to come to that. And that's one of the questions that we need to have at that table. And so we're just identifying it. We are learning you through a process. And we're looking forward to engaging 
and what we believe will be a healthy, hearty conversation. So thank you again. And who am I turning this over to? Oh, JP, Deputy Mayor Paula. Uh, thank you. Just to, to clarify a point you would make, um, if we were to take the properties outright, we would most likely have to tear them down because of their condition. Right? Um, if we were to decide collectively that we want to go a different direction and uh, work on rehabilitation, then that's a different set of steps that we can do. It will take longer and it will take a more complicated procedure. So just to put a slightly finer point on something G Chief Weekly said, we have both paths available to us, but understand that in many of these situations, because of the current condition, we took ownership. The current state would mean that for safety reasons, we would have to demolish. So we've got to have to pick our path here uh, in order to make sure that we're honoring the community's desires on that front. So thank you. And then I will give it to Felicity. So now, this is the part where we go to community input. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, Sam. Hold on. Now, I know we like to talk, right? But I do want to hear from a majority of the community, right? A minute to ask the question, let us answer. And let me say this, Sam, you know me. If there's something that we can't resolve right here, I'll be here for a minute. We can talk about it. Right. One second, sir. I just wanted, to, just wanted to remind everybody for our process, so thank you for following that and coming up to the microphone here. If you guys want to make a comment or have a question, just like the mayor said, if you could please line up behind the microphone here, uh, single file so that we can go one by one. We have our team, Rebecca and Coursera over here. They're going to help us walk through this process uh, with you all. Um, and so I'm going to hand it over to them now. I, 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 I got a question. Yeah. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. That microphone is is a, is a little bit of a decoy. That is helping our city channel team project what's going on. We're going to have speakers use this microphone that the panel is using. Okay. So this is my question to everybody. How come? It's going to be a minute. How come the collaborative? controls everything which happens in this community. And I say this to the whole panel. First and foremost, I give you a lot of credit, Eddie, for what you've done. But this is bigger than Mr. Ed Gaines' group of people. Ricky Burgess has been sitting on, 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 on his seat for almost 20 years, 16. This is bigger than Mr. Gaines. Mr. Gaines should not have to be taking his administration to fix streets. This in Homewood goes back to the collaborative because he was a part of that collaborative before, he, before Mr. Gaines got on board. All I'm saying is the collaborative ain't right. Now each, I can say and tell you each individual, we stand in, the, in a facility where he says it's a youth project. This is a youth program. His summer program had six children from the hood, but he got government funding to program people outside of his community. And now he has a development team that's going to be doing the redevelopment. Last week I sat in on a meeting in this very place. He kicked us out. He said, the houses that you all show us, they got a development plan for that. Just two weeks, two weeks prior to that, I went to Mr. Ricky Burgess' meeting that was up in the, excuse me everyone, up in Point Breeze where the white folks were at. He assured everybody up in here, he was giving them a song of the games. This ain't Ed Gainey, y'all, because I know I've been to his office and I've met with a bunch of his administration and holding people accountable. Ed is holding people accountable. But when you got Ricky Burgess as the councilman who's not working with the administration, yeah. this shit ain't gonna get done the right way. This is, this is just nothing but a facade. Ed trying. Ed is trying. But this ain't going nowhere. I don't care how y'all look at it. That collaborative, Ricky Burgess is a part of it. His thumb is on it. So anything that happens ain't gonna get done. Wow. Mr. Burgess, you got plenty of money. From the previous, you got you got plenty of money from the previous regime. Watch this at home. Watch this up because you work here. Mr. Burgess got plenty of money from now, Mr. Perdue, for uh, balance prevention. I say, say, got a six, a, a little girl who was from West Coast High School who's been missing for two weeks. Where's the, where's the people at? This ain't gonna happen, y'all. 
All right, hold Sam, Sam, I gotta hear everybody. Jackie, come in front. Hey, give her the mic. Um, we have a comprehensive community plan that was uh, prepared by, from input uh, from many of the community members. We have a group of people who brought it across the finish line by getting it approved by uh, city planning. However, the people who oversee the plan currently each run a full-time organization. We need a CDC. That the members, the current members of that um, committee should be board members. We don't dis them, disregard them because of the work they've done. But we need broader input and we need to have some control over our community. Yes. Yes. And we, and in terms of vacant property, I ask that we uh, expand the funding for the CARL program, the construction and rehab loan, where you're allowed to purchase the structure, get the price of the rehab all in one mortgage. And, 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 and we begin getting those properties back on the tax roll. So that is my recommendation. In terms of sidewalks, um, URA has a lot of good community-based programs. So having a low interest loan program for the homeowners who can't afford to get their sidewalks fixed. So, that's how we address that uh, problem. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, briefly, on the sidewalk topic that you just raised, Matt, to, to clarify, what we're actually looking at it is not a, a loan. Uh, it would be some form of income-based repayment process. Um, that would essentially be attached to your tax bill. So, so, so it, it achieves, I think, the same objective, which is that it's um, you know, the, 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 what you pay is based on your ability to pay, and we would complete the work. Um, we're still figuring out the final details, but I think there's a clear consensus from the response we've got here tonight that this is something the community is interested in us um, exploring here, and so we're going to head in that direction. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm originally from Homewood, and I live in Finn Hills, but I have a business in Homewood. So I don't forget where I came from, first of all. And some of these buildings you're talking about are vacant. The homeless people, the ones that are habitable where you can fix them. But some of the homeless people in the you know, top of the find, um, find ways to make sure that they're clothed and they're warm, getting from our little braces, that's one thing. And far as the trash along, they used to have programs where the kids were paid to go clean some of these lots. Mm -hmm. These lots are clean. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a brush, it's coming down Willow Street. Coming down, I'm thinking and talking. <laughs> that's me. But anyway, coming down uh, Brush Hill, they had the flood there. The cars were trapped. They have to clean uh, storm uh, drains. They have to be cleaned within Hunwood. So the other thing that I'm concerned about, you which said three million, three million, did you say? the uh, storm drain, uh, that's coming down Willow Street, Willow and Price now. Yeah, it flooded to Blackboard. Okay, and it's still doing the same thing. That's where the business is. Okay, my other concern is. Um, the kids within them, their grade levels are not up what they should be, and I like to be a part of helping with a program to educate our kids. It's like, like they've forgotten our kids, that they're not capable of uh, being a higher education and in programs that can better them for jobs. So that's what I want the community to come together, all of us come together, and make sure our kids are educated, because if they're not educated, what are they going to get a job? How are they going to get a job? That's what I want to be involved in. Exactly. 
I don't know if you're all involved in making sure your kids are educated and have a higher level when they do their scoring. Because right now, if you check, the scoring for the kids from Homewood is below, very below. So that's our main thing is get them educated. Something that I thought was important. Y'all can't hear me? Sam brought up something that was important. He said that a young girl had been lost for the last two weeks. She just was found safe. And I wanted to lift that up. Thank you for watching this video of Pittsburgh Events. To watch this video again or any other video from Pittsburgh Events, you can go to the YouTube channel is 18 Rico. It's youtube.com forward slash 18RICCO. Again, thank you for watching and you can check out this video and any other video from Pittsburgh Events and many other videos that didn't make it on TV. Hi, my name is Weaver. I'm a resident of Homewood. Oh, yes, Shade Tree Commission. I'm the commissioner for with Roy for the Shade Tree Commission. Thank you for all your work. Um, Blighted Lots. So in 2014, Grove Pittsburgh did a study at all of how many Blighted Lots. There's 27,000 Blighted Lots. I believe we're up to 14,000, the majority of them. In Homewood. However, that has went down because of the Adopt a Lot program, which is a great program. What it is, is you can adopt a lot, make it a green space. We have a farm on Monticello Street, the Homewood Historical Farm, Rain Garden, etc. However, you tell me you're turning it down for more blighted lots. Um, yeah, you can do a garden, but we got a lead problem. We have to do raised beds until you get that lead level down because it isn't safe and we're tired. We are investigating quicker remedies with the Secretary of Agriculture that we're going to implement this fall and this spring at the Homewood Historical Farm. But it's still, a, uh, it's still a disadvantage for us as urban farmers. However, as the Shade Tree Commissioner, and Roy will agree with me, we don't have the trees that we need. We have island effect here in Homewood. We have less. So, when you look at Point Breeze, you see more shade trees. We don't have that equity in Homewood. It's a disadvantage to us. It causes issues. The heat, it's a heat effect. Our melanin gets to spit. All right? We get upset when it gets hot. We get angry when it causes problems. That's, that's something to do. We are working on an equity plan we have for a while. Not just for shade trees, because this is a food apartheid area. We need food trees. We want to implement that. We're working. But we need support to do this. More blighted lots is not the answer. We have a homeless problem. Yeah, it costs money. Okay. When Karen and I went to Germany, we found a solution, which we'll talk about later. You know, um, yeah, but I would recommend more shade trees and more fruit trees. Hello, Carol Speaks, and I want to talk to you about two things, the police and my son. Now, I recently saw a, um, a news report where a person that had been, they had been looking for for months, driving the same type of vehicle as my son with tinted windows, was picked up for robbery and something else. It's a lot of black kids. My son, has he's worked hard to change his life around. And I'm going to need these beliefs to leave him alone. I'm, 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 I, I, I've asked, I've begged. I'm telling you, the way they, the last stop, time they stopped him, they came around the corner while, while he was driving to the corner. That car jumped out and threw something underneath his wheels. Then another car came from the other direction. There were six cars and two sergeants. And my question was, what is my son wanted for? This is not the first, second, or third time that this happened to my son. He's not wanted for anything, not under any investigation. I, I, I just want, before something bad happens, 
My seven to be left alone. Because I'm telling you, there is nothing, nothing worse than buying the last outfit for your child. And I'm not about to do mad to what some um, little white dude from the sticks that want to um, get some stripes. I'm, 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 I'm not willing to be that person. The other thing is, is uh, my street, the street that, that is on the side of my house is falling over. I called your office and I was told that I'm responsible for half of that street and then the people that live on the other side are responsible for the other side of the street. There's no houses on the other side. There never has been any houses on the other side. I called Reverend Burgess and somebody was supposed to come and they haven't come yet, Reverend Burgess. Could you please send somebody up here to listen to your messages? I call often. That's it, thank you. Or right, all right. check the property line. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a paper street. It's a paper street uh, with parchment. No, warm, warm, warm. Exactly. No, warm, warm, warm. Yes, it is. It's right inside me. Yeah. Yeah. It must be a real, real small street. Well, it goes all the way from Parkdale. All right, I'll check on it. I'll check on it. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Baboon Bilari. I'm going to just skip around, jump around a few things that have been said up here on the panel. I'm going to jump on there. First, the uh, speed bumps on Kelly Street. They've been here on there. These speed bumps, I mean, I worked here for a while, taking kids back and forth. The YMCA is over here for, um, for the children over here. They come flying up and down the street. I've talked to some of the people that was out there doing the uh, the, the, uh, looking at the, the streets to do the, the, the speed bumps. They were going to start at Bruston all the way down to Merlin. It's badly needed ASAP right now. Brother Rashad has his, his after school program here. They have a wives after school program. They're making the kids. You see them when you were coming in. These, these cars were flying up and down. They're flying. Also, we need more speed bumps on home with that. You have them up, to up top and down there at the bottom, but you need it right here in the middle. Also, another thing about the housing, that back in the 70s, they had a thing called the Homestead Act. I don't know if y'all remember that. The Homestead Act was where they tore down the houses that were dilapidated and wooden, wooden frames. They're no good right now. Those houses are older than me, I'm 74. They've been here, they was here when I came here. But the houses that are brick can't be rehabbed. All these brick houses can be rehabbed and sold Back then, they sold them for less than a dollar. If you can live there and fix the house up on yourself, you can stay in that house and fix it up. So all these houses around here are not being torn down. You can't just tear down everything. Some of these houses you're thinking about that can't be done. If they're brick, yes, they can. These are houses in Homewood are some of the best houses in, uh, in Pittsburgh. This was the problem. Everybody wanted to come home. I was here when you got I was here. I've been there since 54, and the other folks was living in Homewood. I was here. There's a lot of things that's happening in Homewood. Another thing as far as the, uh, the crime, the killing rate, yeah, the killing rate is down, but the drugs are up. The drugs are up, and it's getting worse. I live up here at the High Rise, right on Frankstown in Homewood, on Bruston Avenue in, in, in Frankstown. The drugs are up, up on Lincoln. The drugs are up. The killer may be down, but the drugs are up. And I'd like them to step up, asking you, uh, Mayor Ed, uh, Ed, uh, Ed, to have the police step up their game. They come up there and sit, have the guy that owns the property, Simmons, put those gates up. He has the fences, the eight foot fences, put the gates up so they can't loaf inside his property. Then they can be swept up. They can be swept off the city sidewalks. Because it'd be on city property selling drugs. So that's another thing. As far as the field and the children out here, I'm a track coach also. Brother Mubarak is a track coach out here. I don't know if they have a track on them to be on that field up there. But we definitely need a track on that field up there because we have to leave the community for sprints and stuff. And, and, and field events, we have to go down to Western Out. But we have to leave, we need a track around that field. So it might not be no track. 
Not enough space. So we still have to leave. But anyway, I'm off of this mic. I just wanted to jump around a little bit. And as far as Mr. Burgess here, respectfully, Mr. Burgess, you've been here for a minute, but you got to step up your game. You got to step up your game. I'm not going to be disrespectful. You got to step your game up. Step the game up. If you can't step the game up, that's it. That's it. Thank y'all. I'm also a man there that we've been cleaning up around here. Y'all, we've been cleaning up to my man there, brother, right now. Hello. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Roy Blankenship, community organizer with BPEP, the Black Political Empowerment Project. But, uh, Mayor, I want to take a second just to step and say I thank your, your uh, staff, the administration, for the effort to try to reach out to community and to engage community and give them a fair shake. I'm, I'm watching you all over the city and going everywhere, reaching out to each and every resident. Um, but what I come as a father today because uh, I have a heavy situation on my heart. I'm watching our children in Pittsburgh Public Schools. And right now, this, the school system is outmanned and it's outgunned. Most of our kids, you guys are from Homewood, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have kids that attend the magnet program, which goes, takes your kid and runs it all the way across the town. But in these high schools, a lot of the kids are right now, it's like gladiator school. I grew up in the 90s when the gang banging was happening. We got down and we did our things, but the way these kids are fighting each morning, I mean, my son was on his way to school at 7 o'clock, and there were kids at school fighting already. Um, and this is not in one school. Um, my son goes to Bashir High School, they got four security guards for 1,200 kids. And this is, is uh, a pattern that's happening with all schools around the Pittsburgh public school system. As they as everybody's saying, I don't mess with the police, I ain't being the police, uh, forget the police. Y'all kids need help. Amen. These schools, the administrators need help. If we are not the ones to go police ourselves, then who will? We can't put it on these representatives. We can't put it on everyone else. We have to be solution driven. A few of the speakers that came before me, they spoke and they were solution driven. And I ask that all over the city of Pittsburgh, when you come to a community meeting, Thank you for watching this video of Pittsburgh Events. To watch this video again or any other video from Pittsburgh Events, you can go to the YouTube channel. It's 18 Rico. It's youtube.com forward slash 18RICCO. Again, thank you for watching. And you can check out this video and any other video from Pittsburgh Events and many other videos that didn't make it on TV. I have a solution also. Mm -hmm. You know, like we, we all know the problems. We deal with problems daily. Take some time and think about what you think the solution is. That way your representative can help you. Or someone has a direct pattern or, or line to go about. But um, I, I'm, I'm done with that. But uh, as, as most of you know. Yes, sir. You done? Uh, okay. Just wanted to respond to a couple of your things. We, we are right now working with um, Dr. Walters and some of the school board members. We've been trying to build a better relationship because a lot of what you talked about is Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's Pittsburgh Public Schools and it's the city of Pittsburgh. But when people think about it, they just think about one thing. So we're trying to build that partnership. We, we're working with them right now. We're trying to put a cable together for a safety plan for our kids because the transportation, how they get from school or home to school and from school to back home, we want to make sure they're safe in that. Uh, so we got to have a unified kind of uh, process. But the mayor came in talking about the youth being very vital to what his vision is. Okay. So he created the thing that we are calling Pittsburgh Pathways for Prosperity. Some of you may have seen it. We kicked off this with um, an event down uh, at the City Hall around our CTE program, our Career and Technical Education program, which is um, housed in Westinghouse. The, the office, the, the main office is in Westinghouse High School. Westinghouse has some of the most, I think, outstanding programs um, in the city. But we want to make sure kids have a direct link for college or career and they can see it because it's hard to imagine yourself when you're dealing with kind of survival things if you can't see how that 
fits into where you want to go. So we have formed a real partnership with the CTE programs, so our kids know that if they want to take this career pathway, and I think Lisa had a great meeting today, um, uh, again, at Westinghouse, talking about uh, making sure people, those kids can come right out of high school, can come right into careers with the city, because we have to build our next generation of, of our workforce as well. We have some wonderful career ladders in the city, so we're trying to that, um, build it out. And by the way, for those of you who imagine the old vote tech, this is not that. <laughs> this is not that. It's very rigorous. It's academic based. So you can have a child, and if you haven't explored, if you have any children that's in the ninth grade, tenth grade, they really should look at one of these programs because they can get the academic rigor and still make it uh, a decision after they leave high school or when they go into college and they want to make a little bit of money while they're in college. Having a career skill is not a death sentence. So actually, we want to say that and we want to promote it, but the Pittsburgh Pathways to Pathways Prosperity is building it out. We're in the process now. We're going to be bringing on an education coordinator who will better align <laughs> us around our careers and around the safety plan uh, with, this, uh, with the school. So I just wanted to bring that up and lift that up. Uh, one last thing too, uh, if you have any children, youth, who want to uh, be lifeguards, we're starting early this year to recruit for our lifeguards so that we can have pools open so all of our kids can experience um, the joy of swimming and make a little bit of money on the side. So we want to also lift that up. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, for the gentleman before you, Roy, and anyone else who came in late and missed it, Domi will be installing speed bumps along Kelly Street from Burston to Myrtland, October 17th or 18th, weather permitting. So they will be in soon. So just in case anybody ever had any concerns about Kelly Street, they are coming. And here you go. I'm sorry. I'm having difficulty hearing you. Belmont Gardens. All right, we're right. We wrote it down. We wrote it down. No problem. Hello, everyone. How are you guys tonight? Um, thank you guys for all you guys do. We truly appreciate you guys. Um, I'm not going to speak out of pain. I'm going to speak out of love today. Um, this has to deal with Homewood. My name is Rico DeLorean Rucker Sr. I was born and raised in Homewood. I own property here. I graduated Westinghouse in 2004. I had the opportunity to go to the Hill District's um, Community Engagement Development Meeting yesterday, which was very awesome. We need to take notes from them because they have it together and we are way far behind. At that meeting yesterday, I was networking and connecting with developers. For those of you who do not know, I am one of two finalists working with the URA to purchase the Greater Pittsburgh Coliseum. I want to say that again. I am one of two finalists working with the URA to purchase the Greater Pittsburgh Coliseum. I started the Buy the Block Back movement for the people, by the people, of Homewood. As you guys know, the URA works on behalf of the people and they follow what the mayor has to say in regards to anything that happens within the city along with Mr. Ricky Burgess who sits on city council. With that being said, at the meeting while I was networking yesterday, I never met the executive vice president of the URA, Mr. Greg Philstrom. I don't know if I'm saying his last name correctly. But he came up to me and he pulled me to the side yesterday and he told me that he wanted me to hear straight from the horse's mouth that the process that we as the village have been working so hard on for the last two years that no one will be chosen and they are starting the whole process all over again. And with that being said, Miss Jackie was one of the four finalists. And there is something that we have to do as the people to unite as the people to show them how powerful we are because everyone knows 
what that Coliseum has to offer. They skated back in the Carborn days. That building is very historic and it is dear to a lot of people in our community. And I'm going to be very serious right now. If I have to run for Ricky Burgess's seat and take his seat and get him out of office, I'm signing up today because he will not pay somebody to run against him so he can win with 30% of the vote. It's time to go. It's time for the new generation to be able to stand up and fight for our community. As we are the people, and this government agency works on behalf of the people, and in order for us to come together as the people and the community, we need to all sit at the table. One final thing, we as the people, we have the right to submit a request to the URA requesting to see all the information, emails, and documents about the decision of the Coliseum. I'm working on behalf of my ancestors and my elders who are here and who are not here. And I'm not accepting no. And there's a way that we have to be able to sit down collectively as a team and work together to give the people what they want. And for the last two, three decades, I'm 37 years old, we have been a food desert. We have been begging to get a grocery store back. We have been begging to get the roller skating rink back. And our voices are not being heard, and it's unacceptable. So I'm begging you guys, please listen to the people. Thank you. My name is Alex. I agree with Rico 100%. I've also been working with him in the Bad Back the Block program. I have something to say about the Garfield Field. Um, the beautification, the Garfield Field, the thing you were talking about, the field, I mean the Humboldt Field, I'm sorry. Thank you. Humboldt Field, I'm sorry. I do Garfield too, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, the problem we were having is when we brought our kids over here to gun violence, and I was wondering if that was being addressed at the field level, because we had to stop several games because of that. And, and I'm just thinking about maybe fences or something that we can do to help secure some security in there. The other thing I wanted to address was the vacant buildings. I know some of them have to be tore down, but like on the hill, I'm hoping that you, if you rebuild them, and hopefully you rebuild them soon, that you, you put in place affordable housing. Because on the hill, the building is so high, so expensive, we're really not. You know what I mean? We want to stay in our communities. Good evening. My name is Gabrielle Gray. I'm a Homewood resident. I don't want to take a while. Hi, everybody. I also am in support of Rico Rucker. And There's no transparency. There's no accountability. We tried to look at bylaws at the URA. We can't even find them, y'all. It's not fair that you're keeping us information list. It's not fair that you're banking off our ignorance. It's not fair that he has to start this whole process over. This has been two years. This is not right that for nine years, we ain't had not one house rehab by the line bank. It's not fair that Andy Sheehan had to uncover that on the news. It's not fair that we don't know where this new money gonna be going. Where was the old money going? Where the, where the land bank money go? Why Cleveland got 12,000 homes land bank in the same amount of time and we ain't got none? Why? Why do other cities flourish but Pittsburgh dwindles? And y'all steady pouring millions. I just looked up public safety dollars. I saw one grant up to $3 million. 
another grant up to $2.5 million for CVI. Now we got CVI that y'all trying to fund. When is it going to stop? When y'all going to stop poverty pumping our narrative? And it's not even real. Y'all lying on us in these proposals talking about we are at risk. We're low income. We're kings. We're queens. We are not that stuff that y'all keep putting up in these proposals. And it's hurtful. It's causing harm to the community that we got a humble comprehensive plan that don't protect. Thank you for watching this video of Pittsburgh Events. To watch this video again or any other video from Pittsburgh Events, you can go to the YouTube channel. is 18 Rico. It's youtube.com forward slash 18RICCO. Again, thank you for watching. And you can check out this video and any other video from Pittsburgh Events and many other videos that didn't make it on TV. Pet Homeward Residence at all. There's a development being snuck in. Changing the idea of left and right, putting in permits left and right, and then a week later we talking about it at the home of collaborative like it's an already done sealed deal. This is not okay. Things have got to change. If y'all trying to make peace in the streets, then y'all can't keep planting these seeds of violence and horror. Y'all can't keep gaslighting us. Y'all can't keep making us feel bad for asking for accountability. Y'all can't keep making us feel bad when we want transparency. That's your responsibility. I understand what the BPEC gentleman said. We do have to come up with solutions for our own nation building. But at the end of the day, y'all the ones got the power seat. Y'all are the power brokers. Y'all are the king and queen makers. Y'all are the ones who signed the final contract that determines where this money is really going. We can't keep moving in this direction, talking about racism is a social health crisis when racism is a man-made construct. We gotta be real for the next generation at least. They can't be removed from the truth the way y'all trying to remove us from the truth. We need better communication. We need better forms of information. We need black lives really to matter. We don't want to keep exploiting black lives matter narrative. We really want some black lives matter legislation to protect black lives. We really want spaces where we can discuss development at the initial phases. Like Rico said, the Hill got it going on. I saw them use a scorecard to determine whether or not that parking lot fit to be built in the Hill. And if that scorecard don't come right, that project don't get built. But that's not what's happening here in Homewood. We got a Homewood comprehensive plan that actually got submitted into the city of Pittsburgh behind residents' backs because it happened during COVID. And they didn't care enough about us to let us know to go to the commission hearing down on Ross Ave. They keep saying that there's all this good work being done behind closed doors. But since when do good work be done behind closed doors? I thank you for your time. Thank you, sis. Thank you. First, we want to make sure we, we hear you. The Coliseum, we know, is an institution that you all care about. You know, like I know, this mayor cares about it too. So, 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 I want to clarify something. We want to make sure whatever we agree to, 
that what the community agreed to can actually happen. One thing we don't want to do is set anybody up for failure or for something that can't be done. So we understand what you just said. We're not going to duck the difficult question, but I want Jake Pollock, the Deputy Mayor, to talk about why the decision was made and what we think the process needs to look like going forward. And by the way, if everybody who supplied a proposal is willing to sign so we can open up, now I don't know the legal, I'm saying something before my, you know, that, but if, if people are willing to let this process be fully transparent and we can lay out all of the things that we went through and why the decision had to be made like that, we are willing to do that as well, if we can. So let, let, let me have Jake Pollock respond. Let me have Jake. Let, We not we we haven't been here two years, Sam. We just came in. We just came in. You're running from it. We we're not running from it. We just came in, Sam. Are you gonna let me talk or you gonna talk over? Me? Are you gonna talk over me or you gonna let me talk, Sam? You asked me for the I'm, I'm about to respond to you. I'm not run, I have never run in my life except on the field. So 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 what I'm saying to you, Sam? Chill out. Chill out. Chill out. Thanks, Chief. So, as it relates to the Coliseum, the, the, the current status is this. It was the, the clearest thing, clear as a bell, from the community dialogue around the proposals that were received, that we, we can see, is that the community wants a community and recreational asset, right? The, 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 the community wants this to be a space for people to gather, to, uh, to be together and to celebrate each other in community, in including potentially skating. I see you holding your skating. Right. Um, the, that, 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 that was abundantly clear. Of the proposals that we received and the information that was submitted through the process that was started last year, the proposal that um, had the ability to make the greatest financial sense was not a recreational asset. So the choice was to initiate a new process to... Please let me finish that. What, what, what was, was, was either to open the process back up with a particular focus on asking only for those kinds of proposals or to make it a, a, to go down a different path, and, and, and being that it's clear that the community's desire is for a community asset, that's the reason that we're looking to reinitiate the process and ask for that specifically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. said we willing to, right? That was number one. We said we was willing to. Two is what you heard the chief says that if everybody agreed, well, I'm not going with up theirs because I wouldn't be fair. Matter of fact, they would have to agree to do that and then I would, and then we would consider doing that if it was respectful. That's number two. He didn't dodge those questions. He asked. Hold on, let me finish. I'm answering your question. Thirdly is, we wasn't in when they started this process. Come on, wait a minute, wait a minute, now you don't. Because right now, the building can be used for more than just a recreational asset. It can be used for something else. 
if we're holding to what we got right now based on financials and everything else, we got to, you know, I can't talk about that, but you know where I'm going with it. Well, we're saying to float it again with the intention to make it a community asset so that people can have it, then that's what the recommendations that come in will do. Now, well, hold on. We went there two years ago, but we heard the community. So we had to make the choice. We didn't follow the narrative. We followed what we said we would do is listen, but just because we listen don't mean we can cut it now, knowing that it might not go in a way that's going to be beneficial to what you want. We want to make sure that we're listening in a way that we're beneficial to the community. We can't do that unless we come out here. Thank you for watching this video of Pittsburgh Events. To watch this video again or any other video from Pittsburgh Events, you can go to the YouTube channel. It's 18 Rico. It's youtube.com forward slash 18RICCO. Again, thank you for watching. And you can check out this video and any other video from Pittsburgh Events and many other videos that didn't make it on TV. It's 211. Again, this is a pre arrest and pre diversion program for youth all over Allegheny County, but one of the target communities is here in Homewood. And the idea is that instead of schools, instead of community, instead of other entities calling the police to address things that are going on with our kids, call 211, be connected to the Caring Connections program, and we will use community-based resources to work with that youth and to work with that family so they don't end up in the system, so they don't end up in foster care, so they don't end up in police care or anywhere else. There are huge disparities of black and brown children going into the system being arrested for things that could have been addressed like the old school village used to address. So now we're going back to that. So again, Caring Connections, 211, stop calling the police for things that can be addressed in other ways. You have to write your, your no. information. No. no, we take the information that you give us and we connect with that family. So, no. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kamal, and I just wanted to uh, address a couple of things. <clears throat> Many of which, but some of which have changed since I've been in this line. I think, oh, I think that um, the chaos that's going on right now proves that the system is, that when you're talking about the system, it's broken. And it's broken in such a way 
that Pittsburgh, and especially Black Pittsburgh, leads the nation in the most negative, uh, uh, every negative factor that you can imagine. The people who I think are being suggested um, that we seek are the people who profiteer from this, are the people under whose watch for the last 30 years. You know, if this was, if this was Japan, um, they should follow the samurai code and just all come in there to carry it. You know, because, because they have failed us. What I'm suggesting is that we open a pathway for some innovative, qualified thinkers to put together a consortium of our own. You know, not the Homewood Collaborative, but in concert maybe with the Homewood Collaborative. But people are taking the same thoughts and recycling, no offense, the same memories of a mill town that has long since turned into either a tech or service for tech um, city. You know, it's either when you go to a medical tech bar, you are either tech um, qualified or you clean up the place. You know, or you, or you provide the lunches for the employees at the place. And, and so this is what Pittsburgh is, over in CCAC right now. And I just met with uh, the brother over there last week, I got to sit down with him. They have training for um, solar, uh, making solar panels, solar, solar energy. Nobody in the neighborhood knows this. Go ahead. This one, huh? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Look, this is not new. But I, start, I started studying uh, solar energy. My first major was a double major of uh, physics and economics. And I started studying solar right after Three Mile Island. So, and if anybody, just to, just to get that age handle on this, if, you, if anybody watches American Gigolo, that's Richard Gere and all of them. Richard Gere was the Gigolo. Lauren Hutton was the woman who he gigolo for, I guess. But what Lauren Hutton met him while her husband was a California um, congressman who was at an alternative energy convention. So alternative en uh, energy has been around for the longest. We need to, we need to, it's here. It's, it's here, it's here. But, hmm? Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying, you can name it anyway, right. But, but what I'm saying is that this is a kind of innovative thinking that some people, qualified people, need to be able to sit down and discuss, put that kind of proposal on the table and say, get up on this. Because I agree with uh, Rico, I talked to him at length, at length but um, enthusiasm doesn't take us to where we need to go. And enthusiasm is like gasoline in a car. There's many other components. And so we need to get these other components so that we can sit down on a level, head to head playing field with the people at the URA. They're not smarter than us. I mean, we have the skill set on the people's side. They're not the king makers, we're the king makers. They work for us. I mean, I don't have, look, my man, both y'all. But, uh, and I don't know who this is. But, um, we're the king makers. Don't, don't, don't um, um, delegate our power to them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so I'll stop. Oh, one more thing. I, I, I think we are confusing, in many instances, social, we're confusing social service with social change. And, and that's a critical distinction. Social service is giving coats to the homeless in the winter. Social change is eradicating homelessness. We need to be on the case, make those clear distinctions, and make a road. I put this stuff on the table. I was at the city council, I don't, that's all. But anyway, one, one anecdotal. I was at the city council meeting because I read where some funds were going to be allocated to downtown development 
and uh, affordable housing. We, we beat the fire. But then, as I was reading the press release, I saw reallocation. Uh, so this money is already somewhere, and it's getting ready to go out of town. Yeah, I need to stand. I need to stand. I am not Michael Jackson. I need to stand for that. But, um, are people hearing me? Yeah. That's what I'm talking. That's what I'm talking. So, but anyway, I was the only one in. People thought I worked there. I was there with the Ripper Warriors. Huh? No, I'm, I'm saying that I was at the city council, money was on the table, and Nobody was there. So that's it. But I just want to mention those things. Because this is not the fight that people say it is. Thank, thank you, sir. A, a couple of quick things. Um, first, on the, the topic you just addressed, I want to be clear. You, you're right to say that the funding for the downtown affordable housing program that we're working on was reallocated. It was, it was allocated to something else. It was not allocated to housing at all before and is being allocated to housing now. So you're right, it was being moved, but it was being moved into housing affordability and it wasn't affordability funds for a different neighborhood or a different project previously. I just want to make that clear. I'm not saying you were saying that, just make that clear. But I, I wanted to really focus on something else you said because it's, it's really important. Um, you're so right to point out that in our current economy, right, it, as, as our region's economy moves to tech and life sciences and, and, and those sort of advanced um, fields, that it's pretty bifurcated, right? That there are the folks with the, the tech credentials and there are folks providing services to them. We want to make sure that both of those things are dignified work that have quality wages and supports, and also that uh, everyone has an opportunity to get access to the types of skills and training that are necessary to, um, to, to reach certain the pinnacle of those fields. But the other piece that's really important is that there's there's a missing middle there, right? That, that we have a real potential, as, as the previous speaker just mentioned, around solar panel construction or in life sciences manufacturing. That, that there are there are jobs to be had in our region in in the economy that is coming that require all levels of skill and all levels of training. And it's important that we invest in that. And, and that's I just want to point back to something that Chief Wheatley was talking about earlier with our, our CTE partnership with DPS. Because it's critical that we train that our next generation of students to fill every single gap in that ladder, right? There, there are some, some, there are going to be new jobs in designing the future of our technology. There are going to be jobs in building that. There are going to be jobs in servicing that. And all of those should be quality, dignified work um, that can sustain a family. So we're, we're looking to build the right pathways to achieve all of that. And right now, um, the middle piece of that is what's missing most, and that's where most of our attention is going in this space. So I see that we have a few more people in the line here. I just want to give a reminder because we're coming close to the end of the meeting for everyone to try to keep their comments concise, right? So that we can get through the rest of the line. I'm just another reminder. We got about 20 more minutes, so I want to make sure that we get through all of you all, um, and so we can close out the meeting. All right. So just want to give that gentle reminder. Thank you all, and I'm going to pass you the microphone. I don't have to push nothing out, guess. Start. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Aaron, love you. God bless you all for taking on the task. But I have several things. One is I live in Homer North. I've been asking for speed bumps for the last, if you check the records at 311, I have been asking for speed bumps for the last three years because we've had two children get killed up there. We had two murders up there, three actually, and one was, I was sitting in my yard, and the car came around the bend, and the young man came up through the sunroof of the car and killed on the 4th of July, Molar Street, right there in the projects. Second level of all, the same thing about that skating ring, it's not just the skating ring. First of all, let's get that clear. That has been the only some building that we as a neighborhood
can come and get together and have our community to come and sit and talk and explain, have functions. It's not, and, 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 it, and the money can be made there. The potential is there. All of us are not blind. It was a bowling center. Okay, or broke. I am. I'm bent. I ain't broke. I'm bent. But anyhow, second, and the third thing is the violence, the gunplay that I have to live with. I'm over 70, and I'm hitting the floor, and I asked them to have more cops come up there. Not ride through. The stop signs are, they're okay, but who would they care? Them people go right on over the hill. And I've been begging for the cops to come up come up on top of that hill. Because we are isolated, like East Seals. They're, they're isolated. We are part of Humboldt. We are part of Humboldt, and we want to make it clear, our votes do count. And we do make have people. I've gone and ride and rode people to the polls. So it's very important that we be included. And then last is our children. That field is, is the is the important part of this community. Most definitely, it's so important. If you look at the statistics, our children have too far to travel to do any kind of practicing to do any kind of swimming. You know, you can't go down to Kingsley's house and just go in there and boom, okay? It, it's, it's not gonna happen. I lifeguard in that pool. I was a lifeguard deer, I lifeguard in the pit. I've been all over when Rosenstein stood, I was a lifeguard, you know? But here's the point. Our kids cannot be without a pool, without safety, and that means if that, and I beg you women, and all women that have children, if the men don't do it, we got to do it. Get up. And you know what's coming in your homes. Stop turning the blind head. You know, if that kid got a brand new pair of shoes, you ain't got no jobs. What you doing with them shoes? I didn't buy them. Come on, we got to get back to parenting our own kids. We want everybody to do things for us. Let's do it for ourselves. Stand up. Because I'm, like I said, I can have my grandbabies in Georgia. I wish they was here. But everybody in this community, if I run across your child, that's just like my child. Because that's the way I was raised. And that's the way we were raised. And with that village, just like you said, sir. But I need you all to understand. Yeah, but I will also would like to know uh, about these plighted houses and these them houses. It's very important that we get those homes that can be saved, saved. Put somebody in them. Like they said, we used to sell them for a dollar and you had to live in it for at least a year to five years before you can think about selling that house. Thank you for watching this video of Pittsburgh Events. To watch this video again or any other video from Pittsburgh Events, you can go to the YouTube channel. It's 18 Rico. It's youtube.com forward slash 18RICCO. Again, thank you for watching. And you can check out this video and any other video from Pittsburgh Events and many other videos that didn't make it on TV. You know, so let's get back to basics. Let's take it to, the, take it to where it is. Those houses. Every last one of those houses, brick homes, the majority of them can be saved. And if you have the team in the city that goes inside them houses and inspect and be truthful about it, a lot of our brick homes will still be standing. Because they have torn down so many of our buildings and it's, uh, and it's not fair. I look around, I see a concrete city. It literally looks a mess. No trees, no nothing. Neighborhood is starting to look terrible. That's all I got to say as far as bricks. That's unhealthy too. Trees is what's needed. 
We need our homes. We need our kids to be safe. And I do need somebody up on that mountain. Okay? Peace and God bless everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wanted to take just a minute, uh, recognize, I know I saw him in here somewhere. Martel Covington is also in the house. He is your current state house rep. So I want to make sure that I, I recognize and acknowledge him uh, in the building with us as well. <laughs> yes, and we do, again, I'm, I'm, they told me to tell y'all a reminder again that we do have to get through the rest of our speakers because we know y'all didn't have any dinner tonight and we know y'all got to go eat as well. I know, I know, I know. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta forgive us. Hello, everybody. My name is Karen Gilliam, Lieutenant Council President for the 12th Ward, 8 and 9, and 13 1. You take it to speed things just to my point. Mervyn and Kelly. What did you say? Mervyn and Kelly. Uh, we just had a kid get hit. And they, you could, I could just sit up in my bedroom and say, just stop saving your money on stop signs. <laughs> because they're not doing anything. You know, they rip and run up off. And the motorcycles. And it's just becoming, you're trying to move that element down my way and I ain't having it. You know. And just a suggestion. We, Ed, if you, and you, you come, I want to show you guys where the bushes are. It's taller than me. With empty houses, no doors and windows on it. Seal all of them up and cut their bushes out and put the mic to you. Um, put their bushes up, cut them down to the to the Dig them up on Martin, on Lag. Where'd she go? I'm right here. Okay, on Lag. You know, because they can hide your weapons there. I don't, I don't want to believe it anymore. I lost my son December the 28th, 2003, was ambush. But it wasn't because of me. You mothers. I've seen kids walking over their mothers. It's time to step up. If you're scared to do it, you get somebody else to help you do it. You couldn't bring nothing in my house. I did a random search as soon as that gang stuff started of my house once a week. And then you never knew what that. But they took my baby. But I care about these other kids coming up. And it just hurts my heart. We had another shooting last night downtown. Never. And it just don't make sense. But if you do them, come and do them bushes and board up them houses, then you'll see about who's, who, who is, where they're hiding and stuff. If they can have nowhere to hide, then. Yeah. You know, we haven't heard of the hiding. You know, thank you about the bunch. Because I was just getting ready to write on that. And then we need, we need someone that we listen to, that you listen to. He doesn't do it. He's sitting over here. He's sitting over here right now. Okay, okay, okay. Look at the old district. It's beautiful. No, I love it. No, I love it. No, but we won't vote for him. Oh, oh, oh. I can. 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 This is because you can do it too. Okay. So, I don't want to land bread. But you can. But I don't want to. Okay, okay well, then they're going to do it. Come on. All right.
Alright, so let's go. Show us how to do it. <laughs> My name is Billy Vaughn. I'm from Lincoln. One of the services that I do, I teach workshops. It's called Value the Vacant. I've been doing it since 2017. I teach community members. There's a couple people in here who came to my workshops. I teach community members how to purchase property from the city. It is an easy process, right? So everyone is familiar with the share sale, right? The city has their own treasure sale. It's not as often as a share sale, but they have it three times a year. So what happens with those properties when they're not sold, they become city owned. When they're city owned, you fill out an application, you can purchase it. I got a house in here on Heritage for less than $5,000 from the city owned process, right? You can do it, anybody in here can do it. One of the biggest problems um, that I'm even coming across when I'm teaching these um, and what's holding up the process with the city's real estate department and, and one of the reasons why I did this is to, I used to work for the city, not under Ed. If I did, I would have never quit. But I quit when I worked under Peduto because I worked in a real estate department. And I'm like, I mean, there's auctions happening monthly. Where is the community? Why aren't they coming? You know, so they were shutting me down. I quit and just started teaching on my own. Teaching on my own, teaching the process. Um, and I started because this is one way that, that we could utilize the public sector, don't need credit checks, don't need mortgages, it's just cash, that's it, right? So, one of the downfalls to this, what I'm coming against now, is CDC's city council members are able to take some of those city-owned properties and preserve it for community plans. So it's, it's, it's clashing with uh, local residents being able to fill out an application and uh, get the properties as well. And it wouldn't be bad if they're preserving it for, you know, something that's beneficial, but when they preserve it for their plans, it's not aligning with the community's goals, right? Because you're Half of those homes that Habitat for Humanity built, we don't even qualify to credit. So, I mean, what is it being, generational wealth for who, right? Because half of the people that these developments are um, being preserved for, we don't qualify, you feel me? So, to allow the community to be investors and purchase this property, I think it's important. Um, and, and just to say, I have, since, since I started, eight successful people that have bought a house on their own and was able to get it back into tax base. So it's possible. Anybody in here can do it. Y'all pick a date. I t I'll teach it to y'all. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Whenever she comes, she's gonna pick a date and she'll tell us at the end of the day. The Promise Center is on Hamilton. It's a bomb community center. So she's gonna tell us the date at the end of the night. Thank you, Lily. Good evening, everyone. My title is Chief Ekahana. My title is Chief Ekahana. And I wanted to thank the uh, gaming administration, number one, for doing something different and doing away with the protocol that kept a lot of our people out of even considering uh, being police officers. So if that's the path that they chose, I thank you for doing something different. And I wanted to open up with that. While I'm not a, a resident of Homewood, my grandmother and grandfather were until they transitioned. So now their property lies vacant, and I hope that it's not on your list. Another reason um, I'm vested in Homewood is that my mother graduated from Westinghouse. The final reason that I'm vested in Homewood, which is an unfortunate, painful connection to Homewood, is that in 2006, my brother died in Homewood as a result of a police chase due to no fault of his own that took two lives, not only my brother Michelle Rankin and Jerome Smith, died on a corner 
of Bennett and Lane during a police, unlawful police chase that also injured multiple children. So my question to you today is, do you really have to live in Homewood to be affected by Homewood? Or to contribute to Homewood? And also, RCOs are keeping these people's voices in this room silent. Because there's a lot of people who are not connected to RCOs, so you don't get to hear their voice. And so somehow, you've taken these token people to be the voice of the people. And from what I'm hearing today, from all these people in this room, they got something to say. And so I'm not sure that RCOs act adequately represent the voice of the people. So I want y'all to reconsider whether RCOs should be the final voice being heard in the community, because these people are upset. You feel me? It is time for accountability, right? Bring back the quality recreation centers, affordable housing, true affordable housing, not the standards that are at play right now because the city of Pittsburgh as a whole was affordable. I never moved from the city of Pittsburgh because of the affordability. And at right now at a time where uh, inflation is a factor, we need true affordability, not political affordability. Not the affordability that's now the case because everybody outside of Pittsburgh now owns property in the city of Pittsburgh. Who are these people developing these properties? Are you even questioning that? Does it even matter to you? As the girl just, just stated, I own five properties in the city of Pittsburgh. I went through that process. I mastered that process 20 years ago. But now it's impossible. I've been trying to teach people the same process, but they're like, we're getting caught up in all this red tape. That needs looked into. It seriously needs looked into. And I also want to say, Lori, Ed, Jake, you know I was going to go there. But I won't. I'm going to leave that for an email, a phone call in the morning. I understand that, but call me, brother. Call me. Not an email, not an emergency. Nobody called me. Because internet is down. Water is hot. So I can't get to my contacts. Could you call me tomorrow? That's right. 412. Write it down. Write it down. 583. Not on the mic. Not on the mic. <laughs> Dedact that from the record, but I just want to say it's time for accountability, everybody. Let's let's be accountable and let's make more transparent uh, decisions when it's considering everybody as a whole. We need transparency and accountability in this city. Thank you for watching this video of Pittsburgh events to watch this video again or any other video from Pittsburgh events. You can go to the YouTube channel is 18 Rico. It's youtube.com forward slash one eight R I C C O. Again, thank you for watching and you can check out this video and any other video from Pittsburgh events and many other videos that didn't make it on TV. Greetings. I am Bayetzi. I'm hard to door tonight. So I'm just going to keep it real quick. Um, I would like to talk about the speed bumps that really need to be created um, made on Kelly Street. My offspring and I um, live in one of those houses and every time that they want to go outside and I don't want to travel all the way down to a playground that has been vi violence there and has been gunshots and shootings and whatnot there, I don't want to take them up there and sometimes we you know, play outside of our home. I don't want to have to risk, you know, a, a car accident just in front of, you know, myself and my offspring. So that really needs to be um, a priority. All on Kelly Street. The whole Kelly Street. 
all the way down. Um, 70, uh, 72, no, 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 um, it's, it's what, 70, 40. So, on, so as an extension from 70, 40 Kelly Street, all the way down, the whole nine yards, all the way past um, CCAC, up to everything, um, all the way down to um, Hook Fish and Chickens, all the way down there. So the next is um, all these houses that are on, a few of them are being um, fixed up on Kelly Street. I see that. What? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I don't want you to know, coach that. Um, a few of these houses are being built on Kelly Street. I see that. However, on Hamilton um, Avenue, um, there's a whole bunch of these townhouse kind of apartment kind of um, houses. Which they, the, the town. On, they, on the hill. Uh, uh, okay. Well, no, I mean, I'm talking about Hamilton Avenue. Goes oh, okay. Um, so off of the Hamilton Avenue, um, those brown tan um, townhouses that have all those boards blocked up, they've been blocked up for years. I've been here for years. They can be refixed and refurbished if no one, you know, wants to buy it. Okay, fine. But they can be fixed up because a lot of homeless people, they don't have homes. That's why they're called homeless. So moving right along, um, curricular activities. Um, so I've heard a lot of comments about that. I, I self-identify as an Aboriginal American, so I homeschool my offspring. And codes and policies do not supersede the Constitution. It does not supersede that. And this is for every mother or parent that does want to homeschool their offspring and or children, whichever you do, you know, call call your uh, your your young beings is that you can do that, because I'm doing it. I teach my offspring Aboriginal American history. I don't teach them the history in compulsory school. I went to compulsory uh, high school, in middle school. I didn't learn anything. I learned the same thing for 12 years. All that's being done is the first edition, the second edition, the 14th edition of just the basic subjects of math, science, English. I don't. I don't need to learn that for twelve years. I don't need to do that. So again, I homeschool my offspring, and I teach them about our heritage, our culture, our history. I, well, as you would call it, history. I teach them about our story, the wars that were fought on these lands of the Americas. So, with me stating that is for compulsory for compulsory schools, there needs to be something set up through the curriculums about Aboriginal Americans, about their, as you would say, so-called history. Because if I did want to, want to put my offspring through compulsory school, there is no curriculum set up to teach my offspring about their heritage, about themselves. It's about African Americans. We don't self-identify as African Americans. I'm not saying about anybody. I'm just speaking about myself. We don't self-identify as that. We're not social political constructs. So there needs to be something in place through your schools, through your curriculum, that's, that does not limit the learning value of young. The next, and I'll, I'm, I'm going to keep it very short. I'm going to go over the place. Um, why, why, not, why aren't there more community gardens? There's so much about complications with food stamps and things being down electronically, whatever the case may be. There needs to be community gardens so that I, as well, through homeschool, teach my offspring about agriculture. I teach them about planting. I teach them about um, um, a lot of respecting nature, respecting themselves. So if I want to walk down the street, and if, it did, and if the violence is solved, I can, oh, you want an apple? There you go, pick it off of the land. So I won't have to go walk all the way up to the grocery store and have to walk and, and, and carry a whole bunch of bags just because, oh, we need a basic needs of living. Anyway, we were along. Um, the activities, not just for school, um, self-defense, um, archery classes, sewing classes, cooking classes, just the basic needs classic of, of life, like cooking and uh, how, how, to, how to just simply fold clothes. This is all the things that I'm teaching my offspring. And yes, if, if everyone has seen, they're very young. My eldest is Seven. 
He knows how to do that. Washing dishes. I didn't learn none of this in school. In your compulsory education, I didn't learn nothing. I just learned a whole bunch of math, a whole bunch of English, a whole bunch of history that does not speak about my people. That's frustrating now that I know. Now that I'm being enlightened about that. It's disheartening and it's frustrating. So again, to the parents, I, I just want to say this one more again. If you, are, if you are not breaking any laws, codes and policies do not supersede the Constitution. You have a constitutional right to educate your offspring and or your young about your history. And it does not have to consist with the, the state or the board. If you're not breaking any laws, because you're not, because I am not. I research the laws. I'm being educated and enlightened about the laws. So get with any parent that is, not just myself, any parent that is homeschooling, so that you can teach your young not to be so violent, the rights and wrongs. And I do want to say this. Again, if you are, I'm not breaking any laws by homeschooling, and if you're not breaking any laws by fixing up your community, then do so. Do not wait on higher ups. Do not wait on people that have so-called licenses or so-called authorities just to make sure that your community is safe. Just to make sure that your offspring, your children are being educated. Because I am not going to walk my offspring up and down this, this desecrated community. Community, I'm not going to do it. I'm done. Thank you. Uh -huh. well, all good, all good. We're just trying to get to these last two speakers because we do have an announcement. No, we only, the guy in the green is our last speaker for tonight. I'm, you were in line? Okay, I'm sorry. If you were already in line, then we will get, we will have you. You weren't in line, sir. The guy that, sir, please. Sir, sir, we, sir, sir, we are going, listen, sir. 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 Thank you, thank you. Because we do have an important announcement. We are coming back to Homewood. We have an important announcement that we want to make sure that you all have the date and time for that as well. Ma'am, you will be up next. Thank you so much for waiting patiently. We've got to get through you and two more speakers, and we've got to close out. Thank you. Hello. My name is Nina Carell Cruz. Okay, thank you. I'm from Homewood. I'm from the 7100 block of Upland. I was born and bred from Homewood and transitioned to East Hills on 2320 East Hills Drive. So I have seen that world and I have seen our world. And a nonprofit organization for no cause for homeless people and that's something that we truly need in our community okay and I'm saying that from my heart okay um, it's hard I know there's there's money in Homewood there's a two million dollar grant I believe for our community but it's hard to get to and um, I know you're right. You're right. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Sam. Yes, I do. I, I hear what you're saying. But we have to stay together as a community, and we have to speak from love. And if they can't hear us, because I need street. Uh, what is that? That stuff that actually hubs. Okay, we just got our street repaved. I called 311 and they told me that I have to come down there or they'll email me a paper and I have to go walk around the community and have everybody sign the paper for the hubs. The humps, thank you. <laughs> the speed bump, sorry, I'm nervous, so excuse me. Um, and we desperately need that. They just repaved the last block of the 6900 block of Upland. And I love it because we had so many homes. But I do, I, I suggest that maybe the police cars should have a camera 
to share the streets and for the holes throughout our whole community. I mean, that, that would be one option. But um, I thank y'all. No, I don't have a card, but I do. I will give it to my man at Game. So thank you. You and then one more. Hi, my name is Dorothy Bay. Uh, I stood up for several reasons today. First, I want to mention the skating ring. One thing Rico didn't mention when he was up here earlier because he was just so much going on is that they want to, they don't want anybody to have that building because they've decided to use it for anchor stores. Now, if that is the case, then that means to me, and I don't know what that means, this is just what I heard. And, 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 well, I'm just saying this is what he was told. That he want anchor, they want anchor stores there in the, in the building where the skating rink used to be. So, I wanted to know, if you can't answer it now, that's fine. I'm not necessarily going to answer, but it is a rhetorical question as far as I'm concerned. I understand that. I understand what you said. Okay. Yeah. But what do they want? Um, no, what we want. I tried to say this before. I tried to say this before. We're not different than you. We want the same thing you want. We want to make sure whatever the community says it wants, it can actually get. That requires that we make sure when people give us proposals, they can actually fulfill what we say we want. For us, that process, we needed to make sure what came back in that process was not what the community said it wanted. What came back, what came back in that process in the, in the financial world, we didn't feel was the right procedure for us to agree to. So what we're saying is, to ensure it has what you said you wanted, to ensure we can create what you said you wanted, we chose to open it back up so that we can have the work. And I said this when I first started. If everybody who went through this process wants to be transparent, and we can have this full open conversation so nobody is being fooled and nobody thinks they're being fooled. We can have it. But we, in order to do that, everybody who submitted has to say, we're okay with you opening up all of the records. All of the records. Because in order to have this real conversation, we can't have it where you're, you're thinking we're hiding something. <coughs> we're not really hiding something, but we can't share with you everything that we receive because some of it is personal, confidential information. But if you want to have this conversation, and everybody want to have this conversation, then let's have it. Okay. I'm just saying, we can have that. We're not, we're, we're, we're not running from that conversation. We just don't want to. If we open it up, I don't mind sharing public information. It's not just about you, I'm just saying, in this conversation, the city is not running from trying to be transparent. We can have this conversation afterwards. We can have this conversation afterwards. I don't just want to There is no potential because you want to put some anger score. I don't know where that came from, but that's not why I was objecting. Well, he was talking some bullshit. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, and, and I'm just wondering what, you know, I didn't, we didn't hear anything when the wheel mill went in, we didn't, and we don't know what kind of hoops that they have to, what kind of hoops that they jump through, that, that we have to jump through, that they didn't have to, because we didn't hear anything. We just hoped that it was up and running and done, and affecting uh, uh, the situation where my mother's property is down at that end. We actually went to a meeting about it. So it was very quiet. We didn't hear all the stuff that we hear about anything else. It was just there. And and that, I believe it right there, as far as the ring goes. The next thing is about... Um, I talked to you. Uh, I talked to you. Yes. More than one. Yeah. A couple times. Had them come out to you. A couple times. <laughs> Who are you Acker, talking about? Kevin yeah. Acker came out. Right. That was in the early stages, right, the right, very right. beginning. So whenever you call... Thank you for watching this video of Pittsburgh Events. 
to watch this video again or any other video from Pittsburgh events, you can go to the YouTube channel is 18 Rico. It's youtube.com forward slash 18RICCO. Again, thank you for watching and you can check out this video and any other video from Pittsburgh events and many other videos that didn't make it on TV. I can't go all that I had, am I right? I uh, talked to you a couple times. I can't, I can't. And we can talk about it offline if you'd like. I, I would but just love so to. we can be transparent with this audience. Every time you call, we talk about it. No, and sir. I did, you know, I go, no. You better not been in my office. I've been in I your office, but you said every time you call. You know what I'm saying? So let me re rephrase Well, I didn't even get the question out. Okay. What I was going to say to you is that we need to have another conversation because it was never finished. Um, and because of this new development that is going on Homewood Avenue uh, next to the Senior Citizen High Rise with all those units and nowhere to park, the business of it is still open as to all this parking where people are going to park. And you know about the property that I have, and that's what I want to have a discussion with you about. What happened before did not actually happen. We talked. I've talked to you. I've talked to the Dudo. I've talked to other people in this room, but nothing happened. We can talk about it. And that's what, I, that's what I want to talk about. I'm not going to discuss it here, but I just want to put it out here as this unfinished business. And with new business getting ready to happen in the very vicinity, that can, needs to be rectified. And I believe in what I have, that can be accomplished. Oh, one other thing. Uh, city property uh, seminar. If anybody wants to sign the sheet, here it is to sign it. And Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, we got one more. Thank you. We got one more. I just want to make one point before this last um, question. I wanted to clarify this because I think it's important. Some, and we've talked about this as a team. I know that Kyle was not able to meet here tonight. This is something I know he message he wanted me to share with you all. Every time you see development going up, does not mean that the city is involved in that particular development. If it is private property, it has not. It is not affiliated with the city. So sometimes you see developments happening. We don't have a say over what happens on private property so long as it complies with the regulatory process, zoning, permitting, all of that. So I just want to make that distinction for you all here tonight as well. Thank you. And that will be very brief. Uh, to get everybody out of here, uh, my name is Raymond Robinson. I'm actually a resident of Brighton Heights. I work in Homewood, uh, and I'm committed to, 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 to helping Homewood as best I can. Uh, two questions about public safety. Um, you know, earlier, uh, I'm not sure if it was you, Jake, that mentioned about the change in eligibility for the new police class. Um, one of my concerns, or questions, I guess, is how will the Bureau ensure that former officers from other police jurisdictions who might have had checkered past aren't going to come over here and get in under this, this new policy where they don't have to go through all the same training. First question. And then the second question is, um, in, in my work, I've seen, in my, in my work and personal, I've seen the, the impact that the um, Bureau's community engagement officers can have. So I've worked closely with uh, Sergeant Tiffany Klein Costa. Uh, I can't speak highly enough about the work that she and her team does. Uh, and I'm just curious, can the Bureau train more officers to be in that line of work? And or are there ways to get those skills that some of those officers seem to have more transferable to the rest of the force uh, in, their, in their typical lines of work? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thanks for that question. Um, and the, the first one, how do we make sure that officers are trained? And so let me just clarify, the, the way that it used to work is you had to have 60 degrees of college credit before you could even begin 18 months of training. Nobody, nobody is going to escape the training that we want our officers to have, that we have the ability to design. Nobody's going to escape the psychological test. Nobody, what, this is strictly about a bunch of stuff that you had to have before you could even come to training. So no matter where you begin, you get our training. That's the first thing. And then the second question just went right out of my head, money. Community resource officers. So look, I, I think we all agree, and, and people who have met our community resource officers, the truth is, all of our officers need to be community resource officers. That's the direction that we want to go. Not a special group who get good at talking to the community. Every officer, a community resource officer. Oh, 
Like yeah. God's family. It's a separate, it's a, it's a separate, it's a separate process. And it's a, thank you for clarifying that question. Yeah. So there are multiple ways in which those records are checked as part of the screening process. One is um, thanks to legislation that our now mayor and chief of staff voted for, there is greater transparency across departments on a officer's record where available that information will be taken into account for an existing officer. Second is, aside from that, right, we do an extensive background checks and psychological evaluation, as Lisa mentioned, on incoming officers to screen for those kind of problems. So, so I think what you're hearing from Lisa is that um, regardless of where you're, st this is just reducing or eliminating a barrier that prevented qualified people from getting in the door, but it doesn't, absolutely, absolutely. I'm saying that we're lowering that barrier in no way means that we're not doing our due diligence to make sure that the, the types of um, habits of mind that are important are, are still valued in the process. So you, should, you can rest assured about that. Thank you, thank you. All right, as I close this out, I said uh, when I got up here a minute ago that we are coming back to Homewood. How many of you all watched the release of our preliminary budget this past Friday? I want to see more people that know about our budget release this past Friday, but that's why this meeting is so important that's coming up. So we will be coming back to Homewood on Wednesday, October 19th, 7 p.m. at the Homewood YMCA to get input from you all about, you heard me say, preliminary budget. We are still seeking community input. We will be here for that community meeting. Uh, October, Wednesday, October 19th, 7 p.m., Homewood YMCA. You all will start to see more information going out about that in the next couple of days, but we wanted you all to hear it here first to make sure that you are there to get input in that budget process. Anything you want to say? I'm going to, and Mayor Giddy's going to say the final word. Hey, Homewood, thank you for coming out again. You know the energy, so let me be honest. You know, I don't mind the emotions and energy. That's what we are. So there's no, when we come here, we expect that. Matter of fact, if we don't get it, something wrong, it ain't Homewood. So we expect that and we're comfortable with it. I just want to thank everybody for coming out. I'll be around for a minute. If anybody want to have a conversation, I'll be here for a minute. And then if you want to set up a meeting, we can do that too. But I just want to thank Homewood for coming out. God bless you. Tell me what we're doing here today. Today was a follow-up on a meeting we had back in March. We said that we would be out to Homewood to talk about the homicides. We're down in homicides in Homewood. We also want to talk to about the cleanup. Some of the cleanups we did, the speed bumps that's coming. We want to talk about the Coliseum. But more importantly, what we wanted to hear from the community so we can learn something new. So tell me how did this uh, this meeting went tonight? I after thought it was right? great. I thought it was great. It was Homewood. <laughs> yeah. It was Homewood all day. Yeah. That's so all it, I asked for. Is there, is there some things that you learned today that you didn't know about? Well, I knew about it, but my, yeah. maybe it's beginning to increase. And that's the level of people driving fast through these intersections, mm -hmm. through stop signs. A couple kids got hurt. I got to change that. Uh, and it, uh, is there anything else that you uh, like on the top of your mind right now that you want to address that the community addressed? No, I think that's the main thing. Everything mm -hmm. else we kind of knew and we are addressing mm -hmm. it. But I think the number one thing right now was all about how they speeding through the neighborhood. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so I can bring you more videos on subjects like this and many other topics. Please leave any comments in the in the comment section. Any questions or comments, I'll get back to them as soon as I possibly can. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.